morning, Pastor Doria. Good morning, Pastor Bond. And good morning, folks. God bless you. I'm so thankful you've invited us into your home today. Mm -hmm. It has been a wild and crazy few weeks, a month, and uh, we wish we were with you in person uh, to worship together. Yeah. But this is a this is the best thing that we can do. And uh, but know that we are continuing to pray for you and with you and. And uh, today we'll be worshiping with you. Amen. So Amen. Are you doing? Are you doing okay? You making well, it all right? Are you feeling it's just, a little stir crazy? It's just a little crazy. But I'm beginning now to understand why pets want to run out of the house every time you open the front door. I you guess know, that's. I guess that's in spite of <laughs> holy hilarity of a Sunday yeah, we're going to have. Yeah. A lot of times after Easter, the first Sunday of after Easter, uh, churches will celebrate Holy Hilarity Sunday, and it's a a day to remember that the devil didn't get the last laugh. Mm -hmm. But uh, today we're a little bit more in a serious mode, and yes. we want to talk about hope. And and that's a great and timely uh, type of topic, and you'll see that in our scripture reading and certainly in the message today and in the songs that we sing, and so it's a powerful message for all of us. I do want to call your attention to our website in the sense that there are worship resources. Uh, you can go online at the online worship uh, tab and find some uh, a packet of worship resources that will help you. It's for people of all ages, children as well as adults. And, uh, and also to remind you that during the service, uh, if you have prayer requests, you can just uh, t type those in in the chat boxes, uh, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube, and uh, we'd love to be praying with you or interacting with you. There's different people, the staff that will be online and, uh, and, are, and are online, and we'll be happy to pray with you and take those. You know, the other thing we want you to be aware of is the fact that during the week, there are a number of opportunities to connect with us through devotions and Bible studies that are happening. And if you go to our website, you can find that information as well. We'd love to have you connecting with us at other times as well as on Sunday morning. So we're thankful to be with you this morning. We thank you again for inviting us into your home. And we pray that today is a day where hope begins to really, again, take root in your heart. And we have that living hope uh, through Jesus Christ and the promise that he brings us in the resurrection. So with that in mind, let's uh, worship our God. Let's worship. Good morning. It is so good to see you. So good to be in this Easter season, the resurrected Lord, and to be remembering the hope that we have in him. Now this morning, we thought it would be a great way to start this series of hope with a beautiful song we called, uh, called Oceans. Then there's a line in it that says, my soul will rest in your embrace. I am yours and you are mine. We're going, when the spirit is leading us into places unknown, Hope in that embrace of Jesus Christ is, gives us everything that we need, his presence and his love. And so the youth band, our GFS, has been playing this song for a while in a style that they love on Wednesday Night Live. So we wanted to bring them in, start our worship. So enjoy, worship together. God is good.
Thank you, GFS. That's just awesome. A different approach to that song and a great reminder of where um, the faithfulness of God shows up and what a blessing that is. I want us to uh, focus now on these words from John chapter 20. Powerful, important words, testimony to the love of God and the blessing of Jesus coming to Thomas after he had um, initially refused to believe. In John 20, it says, eight days later, his disciples were inside again and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You know, we've just had some great songs, Oceans and Christ is risen. Great songs that make us feel good and, and we enjoy that aspect of worship. But have, have you ever found yourself in worship and you're asked to do something you don't really like to do? You don't really want to do? Well, sometimes taking a good, hard look at ourselves, recognizing that we are sinful, well, that's not normally something that we like to do. But it's important to do. As we recognize who God is, He's perfect, we also know that we are far from it. In fact, we're experiencing the, the struggle and consequence of sin in this world, and we do so every day. So at this time of our service, we take time to confess our sins and receive and hear that wonderful forgiveness that God has for us. You know, the Bible says in John's first letter that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But he also goes on to say that if we confess our sins, that God forgives us, he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So let's take time to confess our sins before the Lord. Almighty God and gracious Father, we do come before you and we recognize we are sinful and unclean. We've sinned against you in thought and word and deed, by things we've done, by things we haven't done. We haven't loved our neighbors as we should. We put ourselves too often first and sometimes only. Lord, forgive us for our sin and forgive us for any prejudice that's in our life and in our hearts and minds, for any judgment, the things that we hold against our brothers, our sisters, our spouse, our children, our parents. And Lord, we're broken inside. And so we recognize that before you and we take this time of silence in our hearts and minds to confess our sins to you. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers of your people and meet us in our times of need. For the sake of Jesus, who has risen from the dead, forgive us, cleanse us, make us new, so that we can share your love in this broken world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus has died for your sins. And he has paid the full price for all of your sins. So receive and hear these wonderful words that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
will he can move the mountains my god is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the Christian church throughout generations have professed their faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. And today we are going to do the same. Scattered throughout our homes, Cyprus, Houston, and beyond, uh, even across the United States, we collectively, as the body of Christ, can speak these wonderful words. Um, and so let us join together and say this creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, having said those wonderful words professing our faith, let us join together and pray. And there are uh, numerous prayer requests that we've received. Uh, some will be scrolling through, and uh, we also know that there are prayer requests on our on our website if you'd like to to lift those up during the week and certainly again you may want to just chat uh, through the chat board type in a prayer request and again people there who are online with you will be lifting you up in prayer in this very moment so let's join together and pray uh, gracious father we do come before you and we trust in your presence and that you are with us as we are scattered in different homes and in different places worshiping together because your spirit connects us your word connects us and of course jesus who has promised to be with us all uh, is is with us and so we rejoice in your presence and find hope in that emmanuel that you are with us Lord, continue to help us to celebrate in times of trial, and, uh, and certainly there are plenty of trials that, that we are going through. Uh, Lord, we ask that you're with those who are facing uh, struggles in their health, uh, whether it be the COVID-19 or other issues. Uh, Lord, I know uh, that Jack has been, is a, one, of our, one of the guys that's connected to our church, and, and uh, he's in ICU, and he's struggling for his life. And, and we commend him to your care, just like we commend all people uh, who are struggling. We lift up Lloyd and Ross and Don and Micah and Jim and Chuck and Tracy and Ralph, uh, Randon and Marie, Cameron and Sue and others we know in our hearts and minds that need your healing touch. 
And Father, for those who are grieving, as the people have drawn their last earthly breath and have left behind loved ones, we ask that you bless Bev's family and the passing of her mother and also for Mary Jane, uh, who, uh, whose husband who uh, has passed away, and, and for others that we know in our hearts and minds that need your special comfort and presence of the Holy Spirit. May you help them be comforted with that wonderful promise of the Holy Spirit and, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That resurrection is for us all who believe. Lord, we also come before you and we pray for our um, uh, our friends and family members like Cindy, who's starting a new chemo regiment, and for our the hospital staff that work on, on so many patients throughout our world, that those doctors and nurses and technicians, they, uh, they are strengthened as they carry out their duties. And be with also the first responders in all our communities, and uh, bless them with perseverance and good health uh, as they put themselves in harm's way so often. Lord, for um, that, for Tracy, uh, whose whose sons are having cancer treatments, for Shirley and Linda and Craig, uh, we pray for them and their compromised health. And Lord, for our nation, we ask that you bless our leaders, our President Trump, um, House members, Senate members, Lord, our judges. Uh, we need wisdom to be given to them and a spirit of cooperation for the good of the nation and we ask that you help uh, help the medical teams and the scientists who are working uh, to continue to find and to do research and to find treatments and and, uh, and lord we pray for your divine intervention to push back and to beat back this this disease that's spreading throughout our world uh, continue to do so lord and we trust in you And Lord, during these tough times of trial, we know that uh, children, teenagers, college students, their worlds have been rocked as they aren't able to go back to school. They miss their friends, their teachers. And and, uh, we pray for all these brand new homeschoolers that have popped up throughout the nation. And Lord, we pray for parents who uh, are having to do things they haven't had to do before. And and, uh, we pray for them and ask you to give them special uh, peace and and patience as they carry out these duties and also to see what a blessing it is to have extra time with their kids and uh, and to learn together with them. Lord, we also ask that you are uh, blessing us with opportunities to touch the lives of our neighbors with the good news of Jesus. And it may look different, it may feel different because we're not able to be too close. And, uh, but, Lord, may we look for opportunities to walk down the street, to greet one another, to be of service, to check on some elderly neighbors that we may have, and, and uh, in any way possible, uh, to be a light and a voice of hope that is connecting people to the true riches in Jesus. Bless us and hear our prayer as we pray these prayers in that precious and powerful name of Jesus, who also taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We now welcome Celeste with the, today's children's message. Good morning. So I have a talent that probably none of you know about. And I know you're thinking to yourself, what? She just looks like a regular person. I know, I can't explain it. But I can juggle scarves. And hopefully the air conditioning in here won't mess me up. So you may not be believing it right now, but I'm gonna prove it to you. So kids, this is what I need you to do. I need you to close your eyes and turn around. Don't face the screen that you're watching. Parents, make sure that they're not peeking, okay? All right, here we go. Okay, I didn't say I was good. (laughs) All right, kids, turn around. 
Do you believe it now? I'm feeling in my heart that some of you are saying no. Let me do it again. Close your eyes, turn around, parents, don't let them look. Here we go. <laughs> okay, kids, turn back around. Do you believe me now? Because you can ask your parents, they saw me juggle, right? If you still have your doubts though, I'm guessing it's because you didn't actually see me juggle. Have you ever heard the uh, saying, I have to see it to believe it? So, and honestly, this could have gone either way, right? And the air conditioning is not my, um, in my favor right now, but now you can watch, and I'm gonna prove to you that I can juggle these scarves. Ta-da! Okay. <laughs> so, now do you believe me? It's because you saw it, right? And um, that's exactly what happened to Thomas after Easter when Jesus appeared to the rest of the disciples, but he wasn't there. He came back, they got back together. The disciples were saying, Jesus is alive. And he wanted to believe him so bad. He hoped it was true, but he just couldn't make himself believe that. Um, so he said, I cannot believe it until I see Jesus with my own eyes. So about a week later, sure enough, Jesus appears. Thomas is with him at this time. And um, so now he believes because he actually saw it. And um, Jesus was saying, you know, you're, you believe it now because you've seen me. But and he said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. You know, he was talking about us because I don't know about you. Did you see Jesus die on the cross and rise again? I didn't, but I believe it. I believe it because it tells us in God's word that that's what happened. And we can believe God's word because we know God is truth. And right here in Matthew 28, it says, the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid for I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen just as he said. So it says right there and I believe it. I believe it because, like I said, God's word is true, God is truth. And when we put that hope in Jesus, we're not disappointed because he's faithful, all of his promises are true, and he loves us so much that he died for us. And because he did that, we'll be able to live with him one day in heaven. So since we believe that, now we need to go tell other people the good news so that they can find hope in Jesus too. So let's pray. You can repeat after me. Heavenly Father, we believe that Jesus lived, he died, and he rose again for us. He is our hope. Help us to share that hope with others. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you. Thank you, Celeste. That was great. You know, it would have really been great if you had taught me to juggle, but uh, that's another story. Um, at this time, we want to give you an opportunity to uh, give an offering to God. And for some of you, that will be an offering of praise, an offering of prayer, because we know that there are those who are really stressed in these times, and, and they're, they're in a difficult place, and you may not be in a position to give financially. But there are those of us who are able to give, and we thank you for your gifts. Uh, your prayers and gifts are so important to the continuing mission of God here at St. John to connect our neighbors to true riches in Jesus. And in fact, we've even had some folks who have donated money that is set aside uh, to help people who are unemployed. It's a very small amount, but it is some that we are able to share. So if you are able and willing to share your wealth with the uh, people of God and with the uh, church for the ongoing ministry of God, uh, please do so generously and graciously and thankfully because God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. And if you're in a place where you need help, um, whatever we can do, we can help you let us know. And uh, we would love to be able to provide just even something uh, for your benefit. God bless you. Thank you.
Christ is our living Lord, and through him we have hope. For these next several weeks, we're going to be talking about hope. It's so important. And as we do so, I want you to just realize that hope is not something that is uh, just wishful thinking. It's not something that has to do with just pretending that everything is okay. Hope shines brightest when the sky is darkest and when the difficulties that we face are most real. And so today, as we look at this passage from the Gospel of John, we want to look at it with a heart that says, God, help me to have hope in this hard place. Help me to have living hope and to live in that hope because Jesus Christ is alive. Maybe, uh, maybe you know someone like Tom. Tom uh, was a twin and he grew up and it seemed like every time there was an opportunity for something good to happen to him or his brother, the good lot fell to his brother. He always got the break. He always got the, the prize. He was the one who everybody seemed to pay more attention to. And Tom began to feel kind of left out because of that. Tom lived his whole life in a sense of frustration and, and yearning and, and hoping that somehow, some way, things would go his way. But it seemed like it never did. Tom's brother was the one who got the star role in the play. He was the one who got to play quarterback on the football team. He was the one that everybody looked to. And Tom just sort of melted into the background. And Tom almost gave up hope until he met Mary. And he fell in love with Mary. And the wonderful thing was that she fell in love with him as well. And all of a sudden, Tom's future looked bright and, and they continued in their relationship and they grew more deeply in love and until finally the, the time came for Tom to ask Mary to marry him and she said yes and they set the date and they planned the honeymoon and they were looking forward to the time when they would be able to live together as husband and wife and they were looking forward to all of that and then and then Mary died what was he to do? So Tom threw himself into his business and he worked really hard and he's very diligent and he began to see his business grow and he hired more employees, more sales persons and the impact of his business began to spread and the footprint of his, his business became bigger and bigger and and people all over the state began to know that Tom was somebody that they could go to and, and that things would go well if they would go to Tom. And he was able to provide just incredible service to people. And, and he became more and more successful. And his, his income, his, his receivables grew and his profits were exploding. And then the coronavirus hits. And Tom's business is not an essential business. And he has to lay off one employee after another. The orders stop. The income dwindles. The profit evaporates. And Tom is brokenhearted. He is going to steal his heart and harden his heart against any possible sense of hope. Maybe you know somebody like Tom. And I'm wondering if that may have been why Thomas, in our account from the Gospel of John, was such a skeptic who didn't want to believe. We don't know, the Bible doesn't say, but I just have to wonder if he got to that point of hearing the testimony of the disciples, the others that had seen Jesus, that told him he was alive, that caused him to say, look, unless I see the nail prints, unless I put my hand into his side, I'm not gonna believe. I'm just wondering perhaps if he was so deeply hurt, his heart was so wounded, that he would not allow himself to get his hopes up again. We hear the account in John chapter 20. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. 
Suddenly Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them his wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One of the twelve, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we've seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wounds of his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. And he said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. And put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be a faithless anymore. Believe my Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in the presence, in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life by the power of his name. I think maybe Thomas was a man who was desperate for hope. So desperate that he was not going to lay a hold of anything that could disappoint him any longer. I mean, think about what he experienced. We do know this. It may be that he experienced those other things in his life, uh, disappointments and, and very, very great failures and hardships and where he had gotten his hopes up and only seen them dashed again and again. We don't, we don't know if that was the case, but we do know what he did see. We did see Jesus, he did see Jesus riding the town and the people proclaiming, Hosanna, save now, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He saw Jesus walk on water. He saw Jesus change water into wine. He saw Jesus heal the blind. He saw Jesus confound the Pharisees. He saw Jesus doing all kinds of incredible miracles and being such a powerful teacher for the cause of God's kingdom only to see him, after that triumphal entry, arrested and falsely accused and mocked and scourged and forced to carry his own cross and nailed to the cross, lifted up before others for everyone to see. I'm wondering if perhaps even Jesus disappointed Thomas. I'm wondering if he had gotten his hopes up so much and so uh, such an anticipation of what Jesus was going to do and then to see all of this happen that he just finally had to close off his heart. You know, you have to guard your heart, don't you? You have to get to the place where you say, I'm just not going to let any more expectations get the better of me. I'm not going to get to the point where I'm looking for anything good, because if I do, I'm just going to get my hopes up and I'm going to be disappointed again. And I just don't want to do that. I cannot take it again. Well, whether that was the reason or not, Thomas refused to believe. And he said, unless I see, unless I touch, He uh, probably would agree with the quote of one of my favorite movies, The Shawshank Redemption, where Red and Andy are talking in the cafeteria where they're both prisoners. And Andy says something to Red about having hope. And, and uh, Red says, what do you mean hope? And, and he says, well, you got to have hope. And Red says, let me tell you, my friend, hope is a dangerous thing. Hope can drive a man insane. You see, hope is a dangerous thing, especially if you put your hope 
in the wrong things. If you look for things that are not truly worthy of opening your heart and holding on to that anticipation. So it might be that you're thinking, I'm following Jesus. I'm doing what he wants. How come more people are not respecting me? I'm following Jesus. I'm being faithful. How come I've lost my job? I'm following Jesus. I love God. How come I'm stuck in my house and people are not being kind to me? We can have all kinds of false hopes that say because we are believers, that we're Christians, that we love God, that we follow Jesus, that things are going to go well. And we can hope that somehow things will come together for us here and now. But the truth is, Jesus says, in this world, you will have trouble. Now, I don't want to paint a picture that is hopeless by any means. But if we're holding on merely to a worldly hope, it's a dangerous thing. But you see, into dark and discouraging places, Jesus comes. The disciples are behind closed doors on that first Easter. And Jesus comes. And he says to them, Peace be with you. I love that. He doesn't scold them for not believing. He doesn't scold them for being locked behind closed doors. He doesn't say, didn't I tell you? I told you. I was going to go to Jerusalem. I was going to suffer. I was going to die. I was going to be buried. And on the third day, I would rise again. He had said that plainly. He had clearly told them that. But that's not the greeting that he gave them. He did not scold them. He said, peace be with you. And he breathed on them. And he gave them the Holy Spirit. And he gave them a mission, a purpose, a reason to move forward into the next days. Thomas wasn't there. Eight days later, Thomas is with them. He is still in a very dark place. He's saying, I'm not going to believe it unless I see for myself. I'm not going to believe it. And into that place of darkness in Thomas's life, Jesus comes. And what is his greeting again? It's peace be with you. He didn't say, why didn't you believe your brothers? He didn't say, they told you clearly. And it was very clearly said to you by all of them, including even the women, that I had been raised from the dead, that I was alive. Why didn't you believe? That's not what he said. He said, peace be with you. Do you need that peace? Do you need that word of hope, of kindness, of compassion, and of love? Jesus comes into the dark places, the hard places. You see, hope isn't something that pretends everything is not bad. It's not, a, it's not something that just kind of closes our eyes to the hardships and the difficulties. It's not mere wishful thinking. Hope shines brightest in those dark places because it looks beyond the current circumstances and it looks to a better tomorrow. And that's where Jesus' peace is such a gift. You see, from Jesus' gift of peace grow the glimmers of hope. We've seen that. Just this last week, one of our members, Russ, was taken to the hospital because he thought he was dying. And the pain was so excruciating that he was experiencing that they finally said, we need to do some emergency surgery. And the neurosurgery, neuro, neurosurgeon did some surgery and inserted some things in his back. And, and there was incredible, I would say, miraculous relief. In less than two days, they called his wife and said, how soon can you be here to pick him up? They were stunned. We thought he was going to be there for three to five days. No, no. We get, we get those glimmers of hope, don't we? Sometimes miraculously. Sometimes we need the help of medicine. We have people like Don, who is undergoing treatment for cancer. He's in a very hard place. 
but there's a glimmer of hope because the doctors still are providing treatment to him in the hope that he will get better. And then there's Mary and her husband, Hoot. I talked with Mary just the other night. And um, as we talked, she was telling me about how sick he was. And she didn't know how long he would live. Well, just last Wednesday morning, he died. And perhaps we'd say that he received a merciful healing from God. In a merciful way, God took him from this veil of tears. And today, he is with Jesus in paradise. Hope is such a gift. So we may have some hopes. I do. I would love to have a meal together with friends. I'd love to gather our family around our dining room table. I'd love to be able to greet people and not have to avoid those awkward six foot physical distancing challenges and requirements. I'd love to be able to gather with you in this beautiful space with you here. Maybe you're hoping for a new job. I think we're all hoping for an end to this epidemic. And in the meantime, we wait for God. We wait with anticipation of God's peace coming to us, wholeness, restoration, wellness, and a foretaste of the perfect and complete healing and restoration of all things that will be ours on that great last day. That's why we have this beautiful and inspiring Gospel of John. He tells us that he's given us this passage, this book. It says the disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in the presence in addition to the ones recorded in this book, but these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you will have life by the power of his name. We have a living Lord who gives us hope. I pray that you hold on to that. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you join with me in this beautiful verse that we're going to be seeing for these next several weeks in our um, Living Hope messages from Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. God bless you.
God's peace. Have a wonderful week.